This Steve Jones Show podcast is now loading. The Steve Jones Show podcast is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Purdy Insurance, Brewers Outlet, and NIL Game Changers. Social media, he had been taunting fans with his back to the action as the play started and arrived late to be among those to try to defend. Steve Kathan, CBS News. The Supreme Court is letting stand for now medication and anti-doping rules for horse racing. It's upholding a ruling that Congress gave too much power to a private entity that administers those rules. Game three of the World Series is at Yankee Stadium tonight. I'm Cammy McCormick, CBS News. Have you heard you can listen to your favorite news podcast ad-free? Good news. With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Enjoy shows like The Daily, Up First, and Consider This, available ad-free on Amazon Music. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app for free or go to Amazon.com slash ad-free. That's Amazon.com slash ad-free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Oh, no. Stomach issues again? Stomach issues? Who are you? Your pancreas. I could be the real reason for your diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools. I thought it was my stomach. People often do, but any of these symptoms could mean having a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and speak with your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by... Bringing you an in-depth look at Penn State sports and more. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. The Steve Jones Show is presented by Sunbury Motor Company, Birdie Insurance, and Brewers Outlet. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, so this half hour being brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Uh, imports. Domestics microbrews, the best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drink snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. Six great flavors of slushies, pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills. Indeed, second to none, all at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Uh, he's one of the absolute best in the business because he brings just the ability to communicate perspective uh, and that is the outstanding Rich Scarcella. Rich first of all, as always an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today It's my pleasure to be here with you Steve Rich, uh, let's start with this they have found a variety of ways to win games including what they did on Saturday night what does that tell you about this football team based on the seven game sample size that you have well, I hate to use this word because it's it's become almost trite, but resilient. They're definitely resilient, and a couple of players said that after the game, but it goes beyond resilient. I think there's a mental toughness about this team. We saw it um, at Los Angeles Coliseum a few weeks ago. We saw it Saturday night in Madison that it doesn't matter – how bad it might look at times or how bleak the outlook might be at times, even though it wasn't bleak Saturday by any stretch, this team will still, um, you know, stay the course, be tough, do what they have to do. And, 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 and and honestly, they're, they're really talented team, but to me, it's that mental toughness that I've really seen the last two games. And I know James Franklin has talked about, the coaching staff wanting to be a more physical team, but I think that mental toughness uh, goes along with it. It might be what has carried them um, these last few weeks. They have faced a lot, a lot of adversity. I can't say how it compares to other teams, but they've certainly had at least their share, and um, they've managed to uh, to remain undefeated. And watching Bo Perbula play the game, uh, when he had to take over, it was Bo's baby starting in the second half, and when he came in, they were behind. Uh, 
One, what do you think of his overall performance? And two, how much do you think the read interception that put them in front helped Bo's performance because now they were playing from in front? I'll answer the second part of your question first. The Jalen Reed interception return for a touchdown was massive. It changed everything. And I know, you know, there's a lot of attention on Bo and, and, and Drew Aller's injury, rightfully so. But to me, I, that should not be lost whenever this season ends. Is Jalen Reed's interception um, read it perfectly? Um, Got help. I don't know if any. I don't know if you or Jack noticed this. Akeem Beeman was double team, and yet he yeah. managed to pressure Locke uh, before he threw it. Um, that was a massive play. It changed the whole complexion of the game. And I agree with you. I think uh, my guess, without being on the field, is that it relaxed Bo Prabula quite quite a bit. When you saw and, I, them, and you asked me about his performance, I yeah. thought it was terrific. I thought it was a terrific performance. He did things that a lot of us weren't sure he would be able to do. I thought he threw the ball very, very effectively. Um, and, you know, we knew he was poised. That that was never, you know, that we, we've seen that already. But the way he was able to throw the ball and the other thing, Stephen, I know James mentioned this a few, you know, an hour or so ago at his press conference, but a lot of us wrote it. Andy Kotelnicki did a masterful job of adapting the game plan in the second half to tailor to Bo's strengths. So th- th- that's how I feel about Bo's performance. It too often there's a square peg round hole thing. This is how we do things. you got to play it this way. And Andy didn't do that with him. And I think in the end it also made, you know, it made the running game a lot more effective, don't you? Oh, there's no doubt when – when Bo is on the field, and then especially like Saturday night, he's able to throw the ball down the field, it causes the defense to be thinking about a lot of things. And it did. It did help the running game, I thought, in the second half, for sure. I don't think there's any question about that. All right, so now we get to what they did defensively in the game. And the one play everybody's going to remember about Jalen Kimber is on the the block punt play where Bertram stepped aside and yeah, still yeah. thought about punting and then finally did punt it away. Seven games. How often has anybody thought about Jalen Kimber out there? And what does that tell you about what he's done or what he's doing? I think no, – no, I'm not trying to take anything away from Jalen. Jalen Kimber and A.J. Harris have been outstanding. Yep. Have been outstanding, the two of them. Um, the way they've played, yeah, you don't you don't even you don't even notice Jalen Kimber on the field, and the only time you notice AJ Harris really is, is when he comes up to make a, a, a hit on a run play. Um, I think they've been terrific. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I don't know, maybe you know, I don't know what's you know, I don't know the personnel at Georgia or Florida, but right. I find it hard to believe that these two guys couldn't play at either of those places, even at a place like Georgia. Right. Uh, when you're looking at the long drives and the two touchdown mm-hmm. drives in the second half ate up 12 minutes and 50 seconds yeah. on the clock combined, Penn State's field position, and I was, I was mentioning this earlier, normally if a team is 7-0, and based on my experience, you're usually up about 200 to 400 yards over the opponent on field position, usually about 40 to 60 yards a game more. Penn State for the season has three fewer yards to start than the opponent does. How crazy has that been? Well, my friend Donnie Collins, who no no longer covers the team, um, he pointed out that going into the USC game, the average field position for Penn State was from its own 23. Yep. I don't know what it is because I haven't sat down and figured it out. Did the and I haven't done the math. But look, I know the first three possessions were from the eighteen, the ten, and the eight. Yeah. And I know those two drives in the second half that the, you know that finished with touchdowns. They were eighty-one and seventy-six yards. It's incredible how far Penn State has had to go, and it's you know it's not like they're not getting any turnovers or but they're not getting much from their return game. Let's just right. make that clear. Yeah. And but and field position has 
definitely worked against them, but they've overcome it. And um, yeah, I, I don't think that should be lost. I don't know what it, you know what it was, what it is now, average wise. But I can't believe it's more than the twenty five thirty yard line. I is just it, think it's been it's, it's been something that I think just by percentages will change in the in the in the, the rest of the season. But we'll see. Yeah, it's the twenty eight. Just so you know, I yeah, have it on. There you go. I, I have it on my chart. That's why I know it. It's not like one of those. It's not in the game notes. I just I keep the numbers myself. Um, I keep a bunch of numbers myself because <laughs> here's here's what I'll I'll give you one that you can have fun with, Rich. All right, Penn State this season on first down has 17 fewer yards than the opponent has in total offense for the season. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And their third down percentage it's is 50. really good. It's fifty. It's, I mean, that's yeah. It's really something. I mean, it just you know, I think through seven games, we have an idea of why James Franklin wanted to hire Andy Kotelnicki. I mean, we'll find out. He'll he'll get to another shot to earn his keep Saturday. Yep. But the fact is that the Penn State offense gives you so many different looks by formation, but also with personnel, and they can do so many different things. And I I just think, you know, that te- that defense Saturday night, Wisconsin was ranked 14th in the country, total defense, yep. I think. Yep, yep. What, and, you know, that was not a, a soft defense, and Penn State had, a, you know, well, well, well over 400 yards of offense. Yeah, no question. Uh, Penn State, third down less than four is 70%, and third yeah. down and five are better than 35%. Both are excellent numbers. Yeah, really, good. This point, really good. If you're, if you're doing things by the numbers. You get into a game like this, and you've watched some of Ohio State, especially the last uh-huh. two games. I think the first five games were worth watching. Uh, yeah, I watched you look at the, last the whole thing. Two, Right. I mean, and you look at the last two games. What impresses you about them? And then also, what do you see in them that, that makes them not perfect? Well, I think their defensive line is very, very good. Um, and I think when Jim Knowles dialed up blitzes on on Rayola, um, Nebraska couldn't handle it at all. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether that's Rayola, you know, as a freshman, not recognizing things, you know, not – Calling out blocking assignments, whatever. I, I don't know. That that Ohio State's defensive line is very good. On the other side of it, <laughs> and I actually ran into an Ohio State fan this morning. They could run the football against Nebraska, right? With two backs like Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. That's and then they went for it. I don't know if you remember this play, Steve. Uh, I can't remember exactly the time of the game. It was in the first three quarters. It was a fourth and one play, and they yeah. passed it. It was a short pass yeah. um, from Howard to Ibuka. Yeah. And they didn't run the ball. I think it was no. fourth. I'm pretty sure it was fourth it and was. one. It was fourth down, um, and he, and he that, ran it that out to the That shows me they don't have a lot of confidence in the run game. Right. And then the other thing is, you know this, they're de- probably down to their third left tackle. They are. The second left tackle left was carted off Saturday. And before he was carted off, was struggling big time. Yeah. So that's something to watch on Saturday as well. Yeah, let's get into that for one second because I'm I'm I broadcast games with, I mean, he's phenomenal. But if yeah. anybody knows what it's like defensively to play against a predominantly left-handed team, it is Jack because they played the Raiders so often when with Art Shell and mm-hmm. Gene Upshaw on the left side, the Raiders were one of the few left-handed teams in the NFL. What people don't realize is with Ohio State, when they had Josh Simmons in the lineup and Jackson next to him, Ohio State was a predominantly left-handed team. Mm -hmm. They've now had to change, and they even had to take Jackson, the guard, and make him the left tackle when Mahalski went out and bring in Luke Montgomery as the backup guard to replace Jackson. So I don't know how they're going to line up. But when yeah. that happens, that does change. Like, okay, like the way you need to play does change because you can't be the predominantly left-handed. You still can go left 
with your running game. That's that's not the issue, but not as often as you hope you would because you don't have that over there anymore. Right. No, there's no doubt about it, and it it affected them. I mean, you. I mean, they struggled to move the football, yeah. and um, I, you know, I, that's what you wonder, and you wonder, you know, like it's it'll really. The two defensive lines are outstanding, Penn State and Ohio State. They're outstanding yes. defensive lines. It's how does, does the other offensive line slow them down? You know, that's going to be yeah. that's going to be where this game is won. I think. Yeah. So let's start with what Oregon did. Oregon. We all know that Tully Malo and and Sawyer are outstanding defensive ends. Mm-hmm. But they did what at Oregon. They took the tackles and they drove those two ends out as far wide as they could. And where they won the game is they took care of the tackles, cleared them, and allowed Gabriel to to climb the pocket and have open lanes to throw. Those two defensive tackles, I thought, were fun, really, really good against Nebraska. They corrected that. Yeah, they're, they're, I really like like what like their front. What I saw from their front on Saturday, especially, I really liked what I saw, and that's that's going to be a challenge for Penn State's interior people. Um, yeah, I mean the whole line. I mean, it's it's it, 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 we're talking about Ohio State. This isn't like you know they're whatever they are, the number three or four total you know total defense in the country, and Penn State's one spot behind them. I mean, this is you know this obviously we've seen a lot of great games, Steve, over the years, but this has yeah. the makings, and I hope it lives up to it, of a really classic game. What's this week like for you? Yeah, I mean, you've covered it. I mean, the, the list of big games you've covered is long. So, what's this week like for you? I mean, it's not any. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm going to be writing 15 stories instead of right. 10 or something like that. Um, no, I get excited by it. But I, I will say this, and, and one of my friends on the beat said this: this game is big. No, make no mistake mm-hmm. about it. Look what's at stake. You know. Penn State moves really, if it, with a win, could move really closer to getting into the Big Ten championship game for the first time in eight years. Really big. Okay. You move, you, you keep yourself eligible for a bye game in the playoffs. Okay. Whatever. Last week, to me, the Wisconsin game might have been bigger. Here's why. You're in solid, solid position to make the college football playoff. And even at eleven and one, you're probably going to host a first round playoff game. And to me, to win that now, it makes this game even it makes this game big. Because if you lose to Wisconsin, then this game isn't as big. It's just not. So for them to come through, I I, I mean, I thought Saturday was a great win, considering the whole picture. Drew going down in the first half. Denied Denise Sutton going down. My, you know, he tried to play one play in the first half, in the second half. And Anthony Donko. And the win like that in in a, at a sold out stadium at night. You know, I, I thought it was a great, great win. And I, I'm not trying to take away from the importance of this game. But I'm saying is, winning that game put Penn State in make made this game more important than it would have been with a loss. No, you can't have this week without that last game. You can't. No. So it's all no. different ball and now, game. And like, Jack and I talked you know, about that. Yeah. You can, I know you don't want to say, oh, yeah, you can afford a loss. Nobody wants no. to hear that. Nope. But the fact is, if you lose this game and win the rest, you're still in great position. Maybe you don't play for a Big Ten championship. Okay. If you do win, you're still playing for you, – you, you're – I'll, I'll say this: Your chances of playing in a Big Ten championship game are really good. I mean, without a stumble, without so. I mean, it's it's just. But I, I'm just more interested. I hate to say this in the here and now, and I'm interested. This is a big game in a lot of ways because Penn State has to get over this Ohio State hump. James Franklin has to get over this Ohio State hump, and they have a really got got opportunity to do it this week. Always a pleasure, my friend. Terrific, as always. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Steve. Have a good one. Rich Scarcella, Reading Eagle. We'll come back more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK.
There's something to be said about a sale with a handshake, a service technician who really knows what he's doing. They can explain it in English what the problem is. There's nothing better than having that friend you could trust in the area. That's Sunbury Motors, where you get selection, knowledgeable salespeople, and prices that fit your budget, and more important, that friend you can trust. Welcome to Sunbury Motors, Kia, Ford, and Hyundai. You could chop other dealers and compare prices, but at Sunbury Motors, you get their lowest price promise. They research the current used vehicle market and guarantee their used car prices are the lowest. If you find the lower price, Sunbury Motors will beat it. Three dealers all in one. See their full new and pre-owned inventory at sunburymotors.com. Pick out a vehicle you like and schedule your test drive online. Follow them on Facebook. Sunbury Motors Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Hi, this is Season. For over 100 years, the Purdy Insurance Agency has been protecting families and businesses of the greater Susquehanna Valley and beyond. With the experience of our trained and knowledgeable staff, you can rest assured that your needs will be evaluated and met by some of the industry's best representatives. No matter what your insurance needs are, call Purdy Insurance today at 570-286-5855. Visit our website at purdyinsurance.com or check us out on Facebook to see what we can do for you. 